Hi, it's still Miss Litton. This is still my period three class, and we are still discussing chapter 10, but we are going to move into genetic variation and the stages of meiosis. So discuss with your bio buddy, thank you very much, um, why, here's daddy puppy, or daddy puppy-ish, dad dog, mom dog, puppies. Why are they different? You should have some good reasons at this point. Discuss with your bio buddy. Come up with why are they different? Okay. So, when we talk about why these puppies are different, what was one of the things you Cross came up with? Over. Yeah, crossing over. So during meiosis one, you're gonna have synapsis, they're gonna form a tetrad or a bivalent, and they're gonna exchange information. That is one way you will have the variety. Yes? In meiosis, why doesn't it just go from a closed cell that has full chromosomes to just two cells with two each? Let's think, why do you think it would be adaptive to undergo this process of meiosis that we're talking about this very moment. Tell me one word. Variation. Variation. So that's the only reason to do that? That would be a very good very a very good strategy because that will then we can be have options of in our offspring where they could be better suited to that particular environment, right? Otherwise we're just relying on mutations to get variety. Yes. For like plant hybrids would it still be like Oh yeah, plants are totally doing crossing over, right? The sporophyte, when it before it undergoes meiosis, it's doing the crossing over as well. Absolutely. Fungi do crossing over as well before they undergo meiosis. Okay? So we have the option of crossing over. So on your notes, genetic recombination, variations due to the formation and union of two gametes make sexual parents capable of adapting to changing environments. Adapting to changing environments. Crossing over is during prophase one, and it's an exchange of sister chromatids by non-homologous pairs. If you do crossing over with your sister, it's just same same, right? You want to do non-sister chromatids exchanging information. This is key. If you look on what you need to walk away with in this chapter, you will see this is a key thing. Okay? Yes. So once they do the crossing over, the sisters are no longer. No longer identical, exactly. The sisters are no longer identical, okay? And what is another way we can get variation? Do you remember what that's called? Independent assortment. During metaphase, here are just, how many homologous pairs are in this picture? Three, right? Here's homologous pair one, homologous pair two, and homologous pair three. Three homologous pairs. They can line up any which way they want, and all of this is gonna increase what? Variation. Variation. What do you have zero evidence of in this particular picture? Zero evidence of crossing, crossing over. over. But think, they could have also crossed over, and they have this. Do you see how this increases our options? Okay, and then last but not um, least, what sperm is fertilizing what egg? After meiosis is over with, you have a bunch of haploid cells. Two haploids have to get together. As a result of meiosis, you have haploid cells, not diploid cells. So two haploids have to get together, and you don't know which one's going to get together with which. So on um, number two was independent assortment. Each parental homologous pair can line up either way during metaphase one. And fertilization, variation in which sperm <coughs> will fertilize which egg. egg. Could you see writing an essay? on why meiosis is a great adaptation, yeah? yeah? All right, so let's do an overview now on the stages of meiosis. I know this is tiny, okay? Um, here, this would represent meiosis one. You start out with one diploid cell. Do you agree with that? One diploid cell. And if we take a look in here, here's that same one. Oh. <laughs> So grody. Okay, four chromosomes. All four of those chromosomes are going to replicate when? When? 
Best stage of interface. Good. Okay. Sorry, I thought you said last stage. What's going on here? I know it's tiny, but what do you think is going on there? They're disappearing. Oh, the and you see how they're all twisty, twisty? Yeah. Crossing, over. Crossing over. Good. Okay. Now, what stage do you think we're at right now? If you were going to name a stage. Metaphase one. Good. Okay. What's always going to happen during a metaphase? Something's going to be in the middle. And since we're in meiosis, this has got to be metaphase one because we still have our homologous pairs. Right? What stage is going to follow metaphase one? Anaphase one. Who's going to separate? The homologous pairs. Perfect. So the homologous pairs are going to separate. Then what's going to follow anaphase one? Telophase and cytokinesis. And now here we're reforming our nuclear envelope. You only have one little and one big. And now we have how many cells? Two cells. And they are considered haploid. Why? Because you've separated the homologous pairs. Now each of these cells is going to undergo meiosis two. That's why I have two columns of cells. Uh -huh. Nuclear envelope, nuclear disappear, radium microtubes. This looks just like what that you've already learned? Mitosis. Looks just like mitosis. Now chromosomes are single file. Now when you do an anaphase, it's going to be separating the sister, sister chromatids. But now we're going to call it anaphase two. 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 Telophase two. two. Cytokinesis. Meiosis two always happens in two cells at the same time, right? Right? Meiosis two and two cells. Meiosis one, one cell, right? Okay, so now let's go through those stages. It, prophase is super significant because a lot of things happen in prophase, right? Got to, we gotta make sure we get together with our homologous pair. What happens if you get with the wrong dance partner? What if chromosome one hooks up with chromosome eight? And they start doing what? Crossing, Crossing over. over. You're not exchanging same information. And you and I, we could be exchanging hair color with heart structure. Bad, bad, bad. Okay? And when that happened, that's actually called something. It's called translocation. When you hook up with the wrong one and you exchange that information. Or what if during that time, I think we're exchanging information and you didn't get the message, so I give you some of my chromatid and you give me nothing. I have a deletion and you have a duplication. You have two copies of the information. Also bad. Okay? Or what if while we're crossing over a segment gets flipped? So now my genes are in the wrong sequence. That's called an inversion. So many things can go wrong right here during this stage. Okay? So on meiosis 1, it begins with one diploid cell. Prophase 1, this is a key step. Synapsis occurs, forming of tetrads. Forming tetrads. Crossing over occurs between homologous chromosomes in the tetrads. Crossing over increases genetic what? Variation. Variation. And then you have everything else for that. Okay? What stage follows prophase one? Metaphase, Metaphase one. one. Metaphase one. Homologous pairs line up in the center. in the center. middle. Or center. I am such things. <laughs> okay? What stage follows metaphase one? Anaphase. Anaphase one. What happens during anaphase one? Separate. Separate. Who separates? Homologous, homologous pairs. pairs. Good. So on anaphase one, homologous pairs separate. Then what's always going to follow an anaphase? Telophase one, and then you're going to have cytokinesis. So here is our telophase one and cytokinesis. How many cells do we now have? Two haploid cells. They have one little chromosome and one big chromosome. Is there evidence of crossing over? Yes. Yes. Can you see it? All right, now we're going on to meiosis two in two cells, right? So now, what stage is this? They, here's prophase two, we've jumped right to metaphase two, anaphase two, and then it's gonna be what? Telophase two and cytokinesis, okay? So on your notes, you have um, telophase one, same as before. Interkinesis is the resting stage between meiosis one and meiosis two. Meiosis two uh, begins with the two haploid cells. In prophase two, it is the same as before, except no crossing over because why? Why can't you cross over in prophase two? 
There are no what? Homologous no pairs. homologous pairs. There are no more homologous pairs. Okay, then you have uh, metaphase two, chromosomes lined up in the middle, anaphase two, who's separating? Sister. Sister, Sister chromatids. Telophase two, et cetera. Yes? So anaphase two, Okay, repeat. What say what you said at the beginning? Anaphase two. Yes. Yes. Now that we have half of the DNA, I guess, of what yes. happens, does that duplicate? Yeah, you have half because you're gonna take that half. If these are four eggs, each of these will be fertilized. Let's say they were fertilized by sperm, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's gonna have two. You're gonna put two together and two together, and then you're back to what? Four. Yes. Now, if you have half of half, now you only, now you don't even have enough with the sperm. I have a half a cup and a half a cup. Now I have a cup. But I'm saying you have a fourth of a cup, don't you? When you no, I am not. No, I do not. So you're duplicating. You, oh, you duplicate. Yeah, you remember we always duplicate during the S stage. You duplicate it ahead of time. Okay. Now I want to teach you something just because this would be significant. And it comes up in the notes in a minute, but I want to use this opportunity to do this. When you do, when males undergo myomyomiosis, which you're doing like constantly right now, okay? Sperm. You will make, yeah, sperm. And you will make four haploid sperm. Because your goal is numbers, okay? That's your goal. That You make as many haploid sperm as you can, increasing the odds that you'll meet up with an egg, okay? Now, females, it's different, okay? In females, it's very, very different because when we ovulate and make that egg, okay, it's got a journey to take. It's got to get from the ovary where it was generated in the oviduct, and then it's got to implant down in the what? Uterus. So that whole time that it's moving, it has no source of nutrients, okay? We have to pack the picnic lunch. We have to bring all the nutrients and all the organelles because what are you going to contribute to as a male? Nothing but your nucleus. And you're like shopping like, well, I'm here. <laughs> okay. So what we do is we do unequal cytokinesis. When we do meiosis one, we don't divide it all up like you do when you make your sperm. We get one big and one little. Now the nuclear division is accurate. We separated out the chromosomes. We don't want to make anything weird. Okay. We separate out the chromosome, but when we divide the cytoplasm, we make one big cell and one little, and it's called a polar body. So if we made, when we go back and do meiosis, we end up having just <coughs> one little cell, and that may undergo meiosis too and make two more little cells. And when he divides, he'll make just a little cell. So we end up with these three polar bodies and just one big haploid cell. When females do it, it's called ooh genesis. Okay, we're making the A. I added in an extra ooh. When males make it, it's called spermatogenesis. Genesis means the beginning, right? The beginning of sperm. Okay, and that is actually in your notes. Look over at 10.5 life cycle. Humans, spermatic spermatogenesis, the location is in your testes. It results in four haploid sperm. See where I am, 10.5, second box. I know, I just skipped there because I talked about it with this picture. I said, that's why I said, skip ahead. Okay, in oogenesis, it results in only how many eggs? One. One egg. And the location initially in the ovary, but it completes the process in the? Oviduct. Cytokinesis does not occur until the sperm penetrates the egg. Cytokinesis is done unevenly to keep the nutrients in one egg cell. Okay, and I'll show you some pictures. I just wanted to show it since we are right here. Okay, questions, questions, questions. Okay, this is comparing in, um, did I finish everything for meiosis too, or do I owe you anything? What? Okay, good. So go to 10.4, meiosis compared to mitosis. Okay, so here, look. Copy, line up, separate. Here, copy, line up with your dance partner, separate homologous pairs. 
Then do it again, but this time separate the sister chromatids. So we have two divisions here. So look at your chart. Occurrence, mitosis is common, all tissues for growth and repair. Meiosis, only at certain times in sexually reproducing organisms. Number of divisions for mitosis, we have one, separates the sisters, whereas in meiosis, we have two. Anaphase one separates the homologous yeah. pairs. Anaphase two separates the sister chromatids. Number of daughter cells. How many cells do we get as a result of mitosis? Two. two. How many as a result of meiosis? Four. Four. And mitosis results in diploid identical cells. Meiosis results in haploid not identical. All right, and there are charts in your book comparing, I just summarized it in that chart, but you can look through your book as well. Life cycles, we actually already, yes? Is it possible for a haploid cell to go through mitosis? Most definitely, yeah. Uh, um, you and I don't do that. Once you made your sperm, they're not gonna undergo mitosis and make more sperm. You don't have, we don't have that ability, but plants, that's exactly where I am right here, is to review that again, okay? So under life cycles in 10.5, okay? Um, tell me, is this tadpole haploid or diploid? Diploid. And tadpole with legs still? And the young frog? And the adult frog? And if it makes eggs? They're haploid unless they get fertilized by some sperm and then those two haploids will get together and make the diploid tadpole, right? Okay, now um, look right here and Blue, explain this. <laughs> And slate, we've already learned this. Go ahead, slate, talk about it. All right, so our sporophyte always makes spores by what process? Meiosis. These spores are haploid because you just did meiosis, right? And in order to get to be this larger structure, they're going to have to do what? Mitosis. You're still haploid, right? Then you're going to make gametes, which get, are both haploid, and they're going to get together through fertilization and form a diploid zygote, which is going to do mitosis to grow up to be the sporophyte. Alternation of generations. Okay? So on your notes. Plants, alternating haploid and diploid stages. The sporophyte is usually dominant, usually dominant plant structure, and produces spores by what process? It's on your notes. By meiosis. By meiosis that develop into the gametophyte. The gametophyte is a haploid structure that produces what? Haploid gametes. By what process? Mitosis. Because it's already haploid, right? Okay, and then we already took the notes on this. So spermatogenesis, okay, you will end up making four sperm. Your goal is numbers, okay? Females were, were quality over quantity, okay? So we, we do cytokinesis unevenly. The chromosome number is right, but we keep more of the cytoplasm, more of the organelles in one large ovum. And then unequal again, so we have this one large egg to hook up with this disproportionately large, it's not like that in reality, sperm, okay? These three things here are called polar bodies, not functional, they'll just disintegrate. And there's a picture like this in your book as well, okay? Then, um, quickly, how can things go wrong? 
Okay, that is, oh, do I, I, I don't know, you know, it's good, because I already gave it to you. 10.6, you can have changes in number or structure. <coughs> and I actually have already addressed this with you in the beginning of it, okay? So you could fail to separate either in meiosis one, because in meiosis one, you're supposed to separate homologous pairs, meiosis two, separate, separate sister chromatids. Or you could fail to separate in meiosis two. If I were to tell you, you will undergo non-disjunction, you're gonna fail to separate. Where would you want the failure to occur? In meiosis one or meiosis two? Mm -hmm. Tell your bio buddy and tell him why. Okay, I would not want it to occur in meiosis one. Because if it fails at the very start, all of these will have extras and all of these will have too few, okay? But if it happens in meiosis two, right, then half of them will be okay and half of them will be screwed up. Now, when you talk about looking at chromosomes, you can analyze, you can analyze chromosomes. It's called, you take a picture of it, it's called a karyotype. They stain them. And back in the day, they would stain them and they'd have to literally take pictures of them and from a microscope and cut them out and move them. Now, now um, um, computers will do that for you. And you can see, oh, I have all the right numbers. And you can get an image where they line them up. Here's homologous pair one, two, three, four. Can you see they have all their sisters? You see that? Okay. Is this a boy or a girl? It's a boy. It's a boy. Because if you look right down here, here's pair 22. This is number 23. There's an X and a Y. The Y is much smaller. Okay, that's called a karyotype. Here, what do you see? Any problems? Yeah, right here, 21, um, that, that right there, that's Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Now think about this, sperm, yes? Wait, so B cells don't have to just agree to stop the cycle? Or wait, say again? Uh, wait, it might be, I got it. Okay. <laughs> now, um, <coughs> sperm are always fresh, right? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Eggs, how old am I? I'm 50, right? How old are my eggs? 50. These are 50 year old eggs in here. Okay? They have undergone meiosis one before I was born, as all you ladies have. They don't undergo meiosis two to separate the sisters until when? Until the sperm comes and knocking. So think about it. If I said, oh, I want to have a child now. <laughs> no. <laughs> But if I said, I want to have a baby now, I want to eat a baby, okay? If I make a baby now, and I and the sperm comes a knocking, and I'm trying to separate those sister chromatids, they're like, <laughs> okay? They've been stuck together for 50 years. Down syndrome children are often born by parents who are what? Older. Their sister chromatids are more sticky, and they have a hard time separating and so you see those kind of diseases show up in older people, okay? So if you had a whole extra set, that's called, called a polyploidy. If you're off by one, it's called aneuploidy. If it's just right, it's called euploidy, okay? Look at your notes. Non-disjunction, failure to separate. Separate is your word you're looking for there. Karyotype, display. Go down to sex chromosomes, 23rd pair of chromosomes. They are not homologous in males. Okay, because you're X and Y in males. Okay? Um, if you look at um, females, females, we have two X's. One of our X's condenses into what's called a bar body. That's normal, that's not like anything bad. If I were to analyze your cells, we could see, and you don't know which X is it, it's gonna be, but it condenses into a bar body, the second X. Would you predict males would have a bar body? No, because why? They only have one X, right? But what if you had Klinefelters, which is XXY? Would you have a bar body? 
Yeah. Yeah. That's because you would have two X's. You're a male, but with an extra X. Turner syndrome is something in females where you only have one X. Would you expect them to have a bar body? No. So that's one way to tell by looking at those cells. And here's an example. This is the cytoplasm. This is the nucleus right here. And that right there is the bar body. And you can see that. Okay. Um, Monosomy, I already told you that. That's minus one. Trisomy is plus one. I've already mentioned about Down syndrome. Um, normal female, this young lady has Turner syndrome. She only has a single X. I've written about those already there for you. We have several people within our Oak Park community who have Turner syndrome. So you always want to be sensitive when you talk about that. Okay, this is normal male, XY. Here's somebody who has Kleinfelters, they have an extra X. No bar body, one bar body, no bar body, one bar body, right? I could tell that just by looking at the nucleus what the issue is. This little girl right here has Turner syndrome. You can see a single X. He has Kleinfelters, XXY. Poly X is not Baba Boom. Okay, and you can I can never find pictures of Poly X. They kind of look like they would be models, right? Tend to be tall and thin and wide set eye and narrow chin. There's some people who are they say, oh, she's a she's a triple X. But I don't have any time I search for it, I don't have verification of that. Okay, but those are poly X females. Um, and then this is somebody who has Jacob syndrome. They have an extra <coughs> Y. And there are more males in prison percentage Y with Jacob, Jacob syndrome than in the general population. And some people say, well, you have the extra Y, so you're more right. testosterone. But what it is is they are different. They have different characteristics. And what do some children do to people who are different? They, they bully and mock them. So it may be a lifetime of bullying and mocked, which then tends to make them more aggressive. Okay, so don't bully and mock. Okay. And then these I have already explained about deletions and duplications and inversions and translocations. And these are just examples of those different diseases. You can look at them if you want in your book. We make sure you have your notes on that. Um, trisomy Down syndrome, most common autosomal trisomy. Chances of this increases with the age of the mother. On Turner syndrome, the word you want there is female. On Kleinfelter's, the word you want is male. On changes in chromosome structure, deletions, missing a portion. And C, inversion, is a flip segment. Okay, and then we'll hit the rest in the review, and I'll show you those other slides. Be smart. Don't stay up too late.